Trans presentation comes from, uh, or you can see it over here already. Uh, he's the he's developer and the father of robot framework. Please welcome Mr. Pekka Clark. Hello, everybody. Great to be here. My presentation definitely is not going to be as magic as the introduction. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it anyway. Yeah. So, my name is Pekka Clark, and um, I'm an independent consultant. I specialize in test automation and Python programming, and I'm also the lead developer of Robot Framework. Uh, I expect that many people, or probably even most people here, already know about Robot Framework, but yes, a very quick introduction for those people who maybe hear about it for the first time. So, one thing about it is, of course, it's not really, it doesn't have that much to do with robotics. It's a test automation framework, a generic test automation fra uh, framework, which is um, suitable for non-programmers. It utilizes a double R keyword driven test automation uh, syntax, <coughs> but it's extended with Python or Java or also some other programming languages, so you actually interact with the system using real, real programming languages. It's open source, which is important, of course, because it means that you can use it freely. But uh, it's more important because you can also extend it freely, you can enhance it freely, and uh, use it however you want to. If you really haven't heard about it before, well, you'll hear a bit more here. Uh, in my presentation, actually, the next presentation is also going to be a bit uh, interesting case study about, or case example about robot framework. But if you haven't heard about it, want to hear more, Head to robotframework.org and you'll find much more information there. The title of my presentation was Past, Present and Future, and that's basically what I'm going to talk, talk here. Where robot framework originates from, from where it is today, and also where uh, it is heading to, or at least I hope that it's heading to. The story of the framework starts pretty much from 2004 when I was uh, doing my master's thesis. I had been uh, uh, working as a tester and test automation engineer already a few years before that. But in my master's thesis, um, I wanted to then uh, study test automation frameworks. I had, uh, in my earlier project, implemented various kind of frameworks for data driven testing and keyword driven testing. And I had noticed that there are a lot of common parts like parsers and uh, um, the log generators and uh, all kind of that kind of common components. And I was kind of annoyed that I was needing to reinvent and also re-implement those wheels all the time that I was doing uh, automation frameworks. There was a lot of hard topics. Uh, also, other, also, if I didn't need to write log, log file generator every time. So that was the, uh, my talk to study in my thesis, that if it would be possible to generate common components, uh, to create common components that would be reused in different kind of environments and different kind of con concepts, contexts. Um, I did an exhaustive literature, uh, literature study and then also started implementing prototypes. And um, yesterday I did some kind of a software archaeology and uh, found those old prototypes and uh, I want to show what I did back in 2004. Back then, oh yeah, so this, this is a keyword driven example, um, testing a calculator. Of course, all those pilot projects there, they use calculators and uh, Google searches and logins and whatever you have in, if you have a simple demos. So this was a calculator example, and uh, as you can see, it's a keyword driven. Keyword an example, we have a test case here, another test case here, uh, some kind of documentation, and then the key, uh, test cases are constructed from keywords, like they are in robot framework nowadays. Here's a keyword input, and it takes one argument, and equals takes another argument. The cool thing here was that um, although key, this input and equals, they, uh, that was what I uh, learned out yesterday again, they, they came originally uh, from, uh, from a test library. But keywords like add here and multiply were already in this kind of a simple pilot and prototype. They were implemented as this kind of a high level keywords and user keywords like you can do in Robot Framework. Uh, in these pilots, 
test data was in spreadsheet, so it was really a really like a tabular format. And in the in the other sheet here we had these keywords that were created like add. Add is created so it takes one, one argument and then it uh, activates calculator, sends plus and sends the number and so on. So that's what, what I did. And uh, it actually works. Uh, that was really surprising yesterday, because it's kind of an over, over decade old boat. And uh, I need to run it on a Windows side because that, that it actually tests a Windows calculator. But I can run it. Um, and as, as you can see, it actually does something. So it was still working for 10 years. It wasn't very useful at that time. For example, that wasn't a generic framework. This driver that I was executing was very much dependent on that part of the data. And uh, then if I needed to create some kind of other test cases for some other purposes, I would have needed to create another. And uh, I needed to create another kind of react driver. So that, that was the finding on my thesis was that for this kind of keyword and frameworks, it would be actually possible not to implement logs, generators, data parsers, and so on that you were used already by that prototype, but actually to create a framework that can do all that and in one package, and then a framework that you can then extend with, uh, um, with external test libraries. But that's just finding, and I had, I was thinking back then already that it would be very, very cool to implement this kind of like this, uh, open source, uh, open source project, but of course, uh, from that kind of concept to actually implement this and really implement it, it would have been a long way. And uh, then I got really lucky. Uh, well, it maybe would be fair to say that everybody using robot framework, especially if you don't really, uh, if you enjoy using it, everybody got kind of lucky back in 2005 when an old colleague, Petri Harpio, who nowadays worked for Reactor, but back then um, uh, had joined Nokia Networks. And we had worked together in an earlier project and where I had implemented one of those frameworks that I did earlier. And he, he needed a generic automation solution for their for they needs at Nokia Networks. And um, I went there, presented my prototypes, and this actually looks pretty promising, would work very well in your what you have. And uh, they got interested, and we started creating a real automation solution for their needs in uh, autumn 2005. I think we got the first release already in 2000, and uh, first like 1.0 release already in 2005 or maybe January 2006. Anyway, pretty quickly, we were working in a very agile manner. And then the usage spread very rapidly internally. We went pushing it for anybody, but it was actually a solution that worked, so people liked it, and other kind of business life started to use it, and so on. We had a good team there supporting the framework, supporting users at Nokia develop, uh, developing the framework further. We had uh, two to five developers from Reactor and from Epicode, and well, and also, also me. And then uh, we, we had an idea that, okay, this, this looks really promising, and we'd like to open source it. And that was also kind of the, uh, my original idea from the very beginning, and Petri supported that fully. But well, as you can imagine, big corporation and lawyers, it took a little time to get them, uh, get lawyers agreed that. But finally, uh, in 2008, we got the permission to open source it. And it was probably June or something like that when, the, when Robot Framework 2.0 was released and it was released as open source software. Back then, hosted on Google Code, GitHub didn't even exist then, but nowadays we are, uh, we are on GitHub. So that's, that's where the... <coughs> Uh, framework comes from. Nowadays, um, it's a, it has a really, really big ecosystem around it. The ecosystem started to um, started to grow in pretty much immediately when when we released it as an open source. We got again kind of lucky that there was one guy, Martin Taylor from Texas Instruments in the US, uh, needed a new automation framework for tennis, and then they found out about this new, newly released open source solution. He liked that, and then uh, in pretty, pretty quickly afterwards, we released the first <coughs> library done by the community, Auto IT library. But well, there's a lot of nowadays, a lot of, a lot of libraries for web testing and database testing and so on. So <coughs> dozens of libraries, maybe probably hundreds of libraries available free. Of course, you can also create your own very easily. And then there are also other tools. There are 
uh, plugins for popular editors like uh, IDEs like Eclipse and IntelliJ based editors. Also for text editors like TextMate and uh, Notepad++ Plus Plus and Sublime Text and so on. Mm -hmm. There's a very, very, very active and very friendly community. I just checked yesterday that the public robot framework users mailing list has close to 3,000 users and members nowadays. So if you send a mail there uh, and uh, ask something and the question is actually relevant and good, it's very good chance that you get a good reply also. There's a LinkedIn group that has actually even more users, uh, sorry, more members. I think it has a bit over 3,000 uh, members there. And uh, it's also a lot of questions on Stack Overflow and so on. So, community is it's big and growing. The framework is used very widely around the world. As I mentioned, uh, Martin Taylor from the US was one of the earliest users. But it's especially popular in Finland. I've heard somebody say that it's kind of a de facto nowadays that people in Finland, if they need automation framework, robot framework is going to be one of the tools that they are going to consider. I don't mean I know that, and I definitely want to say that it's uh, not always the best best solution for all kind of con contexts, but it's great that if, if it's people know about it, so that they can they can try it and does it work, and they can they can at least consider it. Nokia is still a big user uh, in Finland. Uh, last time I heard, they had something like uh, four thousand users there, and then there's also other big companies like Kone, Metso. Uh, Vaisa, Erittä Ruotin keskus and Jeff and uh, well, plenty of others, but I only can list companies here that I have, uh, I or somebody else has actually asked that I can use as a reference, but I know there are a lot of many, many, many other companies there too. Cool thing with these companies is that, for example, Metso, they are using robot framework to test um, industrial valve controllers, so embedded stuff, and uh, Vaisa is also using for something like that. Kone also, I think they're using it for testing elevators on it, elevator protocols and something like that. So it's not all about web testing, but what you would maybe imagine. Probably all of them also have some kind of web, web interfaces and are using robot framework for web testing too, but how, how and where it's used is very diverse. One of the risks um, kind of, um, that Okuro had lately was that uh, Nokia uh, stopped the direct sponsoring of the robot framework core team. So the team where I and uh, other, other developers have been working and supporting the framework internally. Uh, our contract ended at the end of 2015. It didn't end because they weren't happy with, uh, with us, that was totally on, on the contrary. It ended because there was some kind of management decision related to new kind of uh, structures and whatever. That they wanted to get rid of all external people working there. And um, I have, I'm totally grateful for Nokia for all for the 10 years that they were sponsoring the development and the initial permits and open source framework and so on, so definitely no hard feelings. Also, although it was kind of a it is kind of a risk for the future development that Nokia is not sponsoring anymore, there's a new hope that you will learn about learn pretty quickly. In the future, I expect that the framework, it will continue to grow, the community grows. Um, I expect the community will grow simply because the code growing has been pretty much like word of mouth. People are hearing about the framework mainly from other people and so on. And when the, the more people we get in to the community, the more people then there are to tell about this to other, uh, other people. Also, I expect that when we get more people and the ecosystem around the framework with libraries and those, it's definitely going to grow because there are more people uh, doing uh, uh, implementing all kinds of different uh, solutions. I would like to, I would really hope that the framework would get more popular or actually more well known outside of Finland. Uh, as I said, in Finland, pretty much everybody knows about it, so it's always or at least nearly always one of the options when, when doing automation and when you need an automation framework. But it's not the same in um, it's not the same elsewhere. The framework is very popular also outside and there's definitely more users outside Finland than there are in Finland. But still if I talk with people 
quite from Finland, uh, they, uh, in the IT industry, working maybe even in test automation, they may not have heard about the framework at all. And of course that's kind of bad, because even if, then if they need a framework or something, then if they never heard about the framework, then the oyster, they, are in, they end up using it are smaller. Of course they can do, they can start searching from with Google or something like that and find about it, but still. But well, I hope that that's, that's something, I believe that that is also something that's going to kind of resolve itself in the future when we, when the company gets bigger, so. <coughs> One concrete thing in the future is that uh, we have founded Robot Framework Foundation to sponsor the development of the framework and also to promote the usage and, and manage assets like public websites and so on. We founded the company already last year, uh, but um, only now we are making it really public. So this is kind of the, <coughs> the first first time we really announced the framework, uh, the foundation. So this this is the foundation websites. It's at uh, robotframework.org/foundation. The founding members of the founders are Ethicode. Elikovic is my company, just me working there, Haiku, Nowit, Omenia, Gentinel and Reactor. All companies who are consulting companies who have some kind of interest, interest towards the framework and to make, uh, making sure that it's also useful in the future and so on. The idea of the foundation is that uh, they'd like to collect money from companies, so you can, the companies can join the founders and then pay annual membership fees. And with those fees, we can then pay the people developing robot framework future. The main uh, motivation is that um, is to pay for bug fixes and then reviewing pull requests from community and also making new releases. Of course, we can do future new feature development and uh, hopefully support also other other projects than Robot Framework Core if we get enough uh, money from, from companies. This foundation is technically um, a Finnish association, so registered yhdistys, and at the moment we cannot accept members out, outside of Finland, but hopefully we can also fix that at some point. But we wanted to start small. So that's if, if you are interested, if, if your company is interested in the future of, of, of Robot Framework, we would really like you to join us. You can find more information about the foundation here. At the moment, joining is sending an email to the email address mentioned here, and we'll send you more information. You can find about the posts and so on from here too. That's pretty much everything I wanted to say, but we should have some time here for, for questions. We are running out of uh, late from the agenda, so I don't know, I don't remember exactly when I was supposed to We're still on time, so if there are any questions, please. Raise it. Yeah, I uh, any news about how to make Robot Framework a little bit more easier to adapt to projects that I have not uh, you know, used this kind of keyword here? And maybe because I, 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 I see all the time a developer who has been using Cucumber and uh, we don't need this. Mm -hmm. Cucumber is like that. I saw this one material, the material outside, of course, uh, the door over it, but still to make it more integratable to the project, maybe? Um, well, no concrete ideas related to that. I think if, if you... I'd like to hear a bit more about what is the actual problem, and then we could we think about yeah. possible solution. But I think in, uh, it's good that you mentioned Cucumber, because um, first of all, Robot Framework and Cucumber are very similar tools, but they are coming from totally different totally different um, kind of uh, 
context initially. So robot framework was initially a tool for test automation, but you, and Cucumber was initially a tool for developer product or communication. But they are there's a lot of uh, they are kind of getting closer to each other, and uh, they, you can use them for many kind of similar tasks nowadays. But robot framework also is meant to be a framework, a framework that you can extend, and you can you pretty much always when you take it into use, you create a, your own framework on top of that. And uh, in there, then that's part of the part of the answer is that you should make it, you should adapt to your processes however you see fit. But if, if there are any kind of concrete ideas how to, how to make that in general better, then of course, yeah, that would be very interesting. I like the ATDD concept, at least it gives you the power to sell it more easily, at mm. least to the you know, answer that you mm. Sure. Yeah. Uh, is there anything interesting about that foundation to get uh, robots to the container, that Docker container? Because the, when uh, we get it into the container, and we get the official container out. Uh, that would be include, for example, uh, all of the dependencies. And you know, when you install the SSA library, mm -hmm. there's a many of the dependencies uh, from the version point of view, and also to the that kind of point of view. So when we get it to the container, it's quite easy to get up and running that kind of uh, test automation container. And there's SSH or something <coughs> where you can get the connection and just create the cluster and use the paid puppet to the execute. Yeah. Or relate to the test automation. Yeah. So the foundation isn't to decide about that kind of stuff. So in general, the whole thing is open source. So if people find something useful, they can share it. And if there are people, other people who you know, find it also useful, they can then start using it and then the <coughs> kind of community grows around that. I personally think that uh, containers, <coughs> having robot framework and uh, uh, related libraries and so on in a container would be very useful. A problem there is, of course, that often it is so that different in different contexts you need different kind of uh, libraries. So as you mentioned, SSS library that's, that is of course quite quite often needed, but not always. And then others, other someone else might need a request library, and somebody might need a set some others. So if you want to pack everything in a, into a container, that that can be also kind of a, that can be a big, bigger project because then you need to always be updating all the time and yeah. the, the new versions. But um, in general, I, I like the idea, and I um, I think that if if you have something ready and something that you think that would be worth sharing, you should just start the project. You. One thing about the robot framework is that you never need to ask anybody, me or anybody else, permission if you want to start a new project yeah. related to robot framework. I, I ask this question because, for example, uh, uh, Jenkins is a signal product. Mm -hmm. And uh, deliver a way how Jenkins has been delivered, there's many ways about how they deliver it. And one <coughs> way is uh, Docker Hub and Jenkins one there in the Docker Hub. Mm -hmm. And there would be similar deliver way also to the robot. Mm -hmm. And that would be. Uh, configure it as that way that in configuration you define what uh, libraries you want to be in the container. Okay, that sounds pretty useful. <coughs> and also, um, how do I say it? Uh, when, when, when there is an uh, official Jenkins image in the, in the Docker Hub, I can trust to that image that there is no any hack which. Uh, with some unneeded stuff in my network. And that's why it's better to get the official image than if it's what I did to the network. Yeah. So, as I said, um, you, have, you or somebody else is totally free to do that, but yeah. uh, I think that you can't expect me to do it unless somebody actually pays for me. I, yeah. I, I don't even know Docker. Let's, so. let's, let's do cooperation and keep some meeting with it. I can show the demo to you. I have just now demo in my laptop where I can show you how to make the uh, simultaneous test automation by using robot framework and containers. Yeah, we, we can do that, but in, in any, any kind of this kind of new projects around the framework, what, what those projects need, they need an active maintainer or initiator, and then it just needs somebody to do it. Yeah. And then yeah. Let's it's, it's, the it's, yeah. yeah. One more comment. Uh, if you join the foundation, are you like the official uh, framework? Uh, then you can then like push it uh, to Docker if you want, like in a basically. Or who is who is uh, handling that official? <laughs> who will pay uh, pay uh, 
Milo from the dog car pub. Let's ask it that, that way. Foundation um, or someone else? Foundation doesn't make any kind of promises to pay. Yeah. But of course, it would be possible then to kind of ask from there. But uh, I, I don't know about the prices or anything like that. But, uh, but I think it is something we better talk Yeah, we have to get a smaller, smaller group. <laughs> Any other questions still, or are we all I think out of time? Yeah, if there is one quick one, we can have it, or, <coughs> or then we will... Was there some, uh, uh, I tried to Google that, uh, from the framework foundation that they funded it. Oh, okay, it's there. Okay. Yeah, it's not even mentioned in Robot Framework or website. We actually got this uh, web page is ready like last night. <laughs> so that the, we had a hard deadline, we wanted to release it finally here. We were planning to do it much earlier, but well, it's not anybody's kind of a main job to, to do it. But yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that this will be mentioned somehow in uh, uh, the Robot Framework or main page like today. It will be easier to find it. Robotframe.org slash foundation is the URL. I really hope that, I hope that uh, people who are using Robot Framework and are benefiting it are interested also to join the foundation and uh, help, help to ensure that it has also a good future. Great, thank you. Back up. A couple of words. Uh, only a couple of words. Okay. In okay. the year in Tampere, there will be testing day 2016. You can find it from the net. There I will keep uh, 